in this last section we are now going to talk about four different types of goods and we are going to learn what are private goods merit goods demerit goods and public goods now the ideas involved are pretty straightforward very simple uh, we are just going to learn that private goods are rival and excludable whereas public goods uh, they are non-rival and non-excludable similarly the way we define merit and demerit goods it's pretty straightforward but this is a very important topic classification of goods into these four different types because if you look at the past a level exams there is a, there is almost a question each year a full essay question in your paper two on this particular topic now the key to making sense of those questions and they are in fact very easy they are they are repetitive easy questions uh, but to get to the point where uh, they become easy for you all you need to do is you need to build an understanding of these different types of goods in connection with whatever you have already learned previously in this course so you need to keep both these things connected classification of goods and the overall story of what we have been doing so far so what i'll do is i will start off in this video by giving you a summary of whatever we have been doing up till uh, this point and that will allow us to link uh, that with this discussion of uh, different types of goods and that will allow us to then uh, you know add in all the details within a precise structure that brings the whole understanding of these different types of goods uh, very easily exactly in line with what the examiner asks and so let me just go back to the very start and start summarizing and make the connection with these uh, categorization of goods now we started off with the issue of scarcity and uh, there we said that look the country needs or the society needs to allocate its limited resources wisely because it cannot make everything that it wants it has limited resources so this allocation of resources that is how much of these resources should be used to produce each of the different products that your society wants that allocation of resources we said that one way of solving this or achieving the best allocation of resources is the free market economic system and then we spend most of our time initially in this course understanding how does this free market system work to allocate resources. Well, the idea that we learned in a lot of detail through this model of demand and supply was that for each product, just let the demand and supply of that product determine its equilibrium quantity and then just allocate enough of your scarce resources. So if this is the entire amount of scarce resource and this product is scarce, we are saying just leave it to the demand and supply. It will tell you the equilibrium quantity and just allocate enough resources to produce Q star units of cars. That will be the best optimal resource allocation and therefore this will be the optimal quantity. Now the logic behind that is that these consumers and producers are greedy, they are self-interested, they will both maximize their own individual interests and minimize their own costs. But since they are the only members of the society that are either benefiting or, you know, uh, incurring a cost because of this market, then when they maximize their self-interests, then the self-interest of the society is automatically maximized. So the next product that your country wants, how much of it should be produced? Leave it to the demand and supply of that product let it determine the optimal quantity q star and then allocate just enough resources so this is where we talked about uh, this demand and supply mechanism in detail and then uh, once we understood how does it work what happens when these curves shift and so on and so forth we introduced the topic or concept of consumers and producers surplus now through that concept and we technically showed that this equilibrium quantity q star is in fact the one at which this benefit to the consumer or consumer surplus and benefit to the producer or producer surplus is maximized and therefore we sort of again reinforce that look this is the optimal quantity this maximizes the benefit to both the consumers and producers and we show that if you produce more than Q star, you will be over producing this good in the sense that look, the sum of consumers and producer surplus, it will fall if you produce more than Q star. So you will be over producing and over allocating resources. And similarly, if you produce less than Q star, you will be under producing and under allocating resources. From the point of view that society's benefits are maximized when Q star is produced. So this is the optimal quantity and therefore achieves optimal allocation of resources. So you can think of all of these three different topics, the working of the free market or demand and supply, and the consumer's producer surplus, and in fact, elasticity as the third topic. As part of theme one, where we are just trying to understand how this free market works, because elasticity, remember, is just an attempt 
uh, to understand in a technical way the finer details of how this price mechanism, this free market works. So that was theme one. Then we moved to theme two, where we started talking about government interferences and we looked in detail how taxes, subsidies and price controls when applied to this free market of some product, how do these government interferences disturb the equilibrium and in all of these different tools of interferences, remember, we always sort of highlighted how the consumers and producers are usually hurt and they, there are problems that are created for them and technically we showed for all of these things that you know they will end up creating a dead weight loss that is if you interfere in this free market then the consumers and producer surplus or the welfare to the society it will end up being less than what it was in the free market so this theme too of government interference again reinforced in a way that look you should love this free market it is doing automatically something that is leading to best optimal quantities and therefore resource allocations so theme one and two if you combine them the message simply is a very one-sided broad message that free market succeeds in allocating resources in the optimal way so leave the free markets alone and the government should not interfere at all in these free markets but now at the end of this course we want to make this one-sided story more balanced and the way we do that is by recognizing that look sometimes this market we are still going to love this market, but we are going to recognize that sometimes this market can fail. And when it fails, that it fails by either over or under producing a good, then the government, it should interfere and it should try to correct that market failure, move the quantity closer to the optimal quantity. And once you recognize that the market can fail, then you also need to identify when will the market fail so that you can know when should the government interfere and in what way the government should interfere. And that is exactly the reason why we classify goods into these four different categories because the idea is and what now we are going to learn in the next videos and details is that these merit, demerit and public goods, they will cause markets to fail. The market will not produce the optimal quantity of all these three different kinds of goods. It will either over or under produce these goods. Whereas the market succeeds when it comes to producing private goods. And I want to highlight here that whatever we have been spending most of our time understanding this theme one and two, how this free market works, that is all very relevant. We will still love this free market because 90% of the goods that you would be able to think of, that is most of the goods are private goods and therefore our idea message still is that leave it to the free markets. But what we are adding now is that sometimes markets fail. So now we need to understand, okay, what are these three different goods that cause market failure? So the structure that we are now going to sort of within which we are going to build our understanding is that, look, what are each of these different goods? So we want to define them, but more importantly, we want to understand why do they cause market failure? And then for each of these goods, turn by turn, we want to look at two different forms of government interferences that can be used to correct the particular market failure that is being caused by that particular good. That is whether the government should put a tax or a subsidy or do something else. We want to analyze two different government interferences. So that is basically the background and once we build now this understanding of the greater finer details of each of these different goods remind yourself of uh, this particular structure take a step back every now and then and look at this bigger picture and then these questions will make a lot more sense to you now we start off by discussing private and public goods and of course uh, we will also uh, need to know why private goods in fact lead to market success so that and more coming in the, in the next videos.